In Tableau 2020.2, Tableau have added the ability to connect to your location data in Esri by simply entering an ArcGIS server URL or a GeoService API URL. This makes it much, much easier to connect to these data sources. So let's take a look and see how that works. The first thing you need to do is head to the server connection. Uh, space here. You will notice that if you're on a Windows machine, you'll have more of these connections than I do because I'm on a Mac. So don't worry about that if these are slightly different. You'll also notice that the web data connection option over here is available to you. This is ideally targeted at developers who are building their own connectors for use in Tableau. But the one we actually want is called the Esri web data connector. And you can see here that it's called Esri ArcGIS server. And when you click on that, you get this interface. Now in this interface, you need to enter the server URL. And if we do that, what Tableau will then do once you've pressed connect is it will go off to the API and start querying data from that data source. And you'll see that happen here in front of the screen. Uh, depending on the quality of your connection, it might take different lengths of time, but just bear with the service. And eventually you'll get a view like this one where you can actually see the individual fields that are available from the API. And not only that, if I hit update now, you can actually see the information. It's pulling through the metadata as it perceives it. So the address information, the city it's recognizing as geographic fields here, if I just zoom in here. Um, and also you can see that the shape files are coming through as both polygons and multi polygons. So you've got different spatial types in a single column there. So that's quite handy to be aware of. Okay, and now once you've done this, you can just go ahead and start visualizing with it as you would. And um, if I hit on sheet one here, that takes me to the next data source. Bear in mind, it has to create an extract. It can't connect to these APIs live because of the way it needs to be able to work with the data. So it always creates this extract. We know that because of this icon you can see here, these two cylinders with an arrow between them. That is the sign that lets you know that you're looking at a Tableau server extract. Now that we've got our data source here, we can start visualizing with it. So I'll do a very, very simple chart. I'll double click on shape, which we know is our spatial field that generates this map. Then I'll color these by the name of these boundaries and I'll add all the members. Tableau is just letting me know there's a lot of data there. And there we have it. We have all the names of the different areas. Uh, very easy to see in Tableau. We might make the map a little bit more appealing by changing the style to maybe an outdoor style and then uh, turning the sort of washout down so we can still see the main bit of the information. But of course, as you zoom in, you'll see that this map gets more and more detailed and you can actually start to sort of gain some context from the map. So there you have it. In literally no time, we've built a very simple chart using spatial data and that connector. Now there is one more thing I'd love to show you. And that is the fact that when you connect to any data source in Tableau, especially new ones, you always get the capabilities of Tableau up until that current version. So with Esri, what we've got here is not just the ability to connect to Esri data sources, but actually we can add new connections. So this time around, I'm gonna do something slightly different. I want to do something called across database joins using this kind of data. So the first thing we'll do is I've got a link. Um, I'm actually getting these links from the Tableau beta for 2020.2. I'll post them in the description below so you can have a go along with this. So look out for the links in scenario number two, but essentially I want to create a new connection. I'll go to Esri ArcGIS again. And this time I'm gonna paste the first link here and we're just gonna go ahead and connect to that. And this is creating a new connection. So you can see it's almost the same data as we had before. And now what I wanna do is add a second connection here. So I'm just gonna copy this link. I've got it off screen here. So you just have to trust that what I'm doing, I'm gonna add a second connection here. I'm just gonna paste that here. So you can see I'm pasting it into the server URL space. I'm hitting connect. And now as it loads that information, you'll notice two important things. The view that I have here has this blue bar going across the top. This signals that it's actually coming from the first connection. And I know that because the colors match. If I zoom in here on the top, you'll see I have this blue bar on the left of this connection. And that's actually the same as what I've got here. And you can see the name of the table that it's coming from and that matches this table, okay? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to see which government buildings reside within a certain uh, water service agency, okay? And now in the old way of Tableau, what I do next is I just drag out government buildings and I'd leave it there. But you see, I get a warning and that's because Tableau thinks I'm trying to make a relationship. 
You need to check out my video on relationships, which have been released also in 2020.2. But essentially, this is the wrong type of thing we're trying to do. It would actually be easier if we could do a spatial intersect. Think of that as like a spatial join with the two data sets. So let's remove this and head into this particular connection. And now you see I get the traditional view for joining tables. And now if I drag the government buildings in, you'll actually get the interface to join those two data sources. Now, the next thing we need to check is to make sure it's joining on the correct thing. So you see here, we've got city on the left and city on the right. This doesn't make as much sense because what I actually want to do is use the spatial objects to make sure that the buildings reside in the city. I don't want to just trust the city columns as being correct. Sometimes there's data errors out there. So I'll use the shape object, which I know is a spatial field and I'll use the shape object in my second data source. So now I'm matching these two, but you'll notice that I've got the equal sign here and this isn't actually the correct thing to do. I shouldn't be checking if the two uh, spatial objects match, I should check whether they intersect. And now that I've done that, you can see here that I get the traditional options um, for joins, inner and left. I actually only want data that maps onto these service agencies, okay? So I'm just gonna hit update now to see what the resulting view looks like. And if you recall earlier on, I mentioned that the colors matter. You'll see orange is now showing here because it's brought in data from my secondary connection. So here I am with a new connector in Tableau to the Esri data source, and I've done a cross database join using the new capabilities with data models and relationships as well baked into that. So it's quite a mind melt. I appreciate there's a lot to learn here, but check out my individual videos on those topics and uh, we'll be able to get you up to speed. Now you can see here that all these areas are in Seattle. So let's over, head on over to the uh, new sheet and let's start visualizing that. Remember, it creates an extract every time you do this because it has to bring the data locally and query that from the API. But now that we've done this, we can just simply bring out uh, something to uh, name the area. So if I bring the name of the area, you'll see here's the Seattle Public Utilities and I can grab all my buildings and just put that next to it. And now I can see all the buildings that sit within this water service district. And so if I'm a planner, I actually understand, you know, if I need to go get a problem solved, uh, I need to go to Seattle Public Utilities to solve any utilities problem that's uh, gonna be generated by these guys. Now you can obviously build way more interesting charts. You've got the full capability of all your data sources here as well. Uh, so you can obviously play around with both data sources. I can go ahead to another uh, sheet and actually just bring back the map that I had before. And we can even look and see, well, where are the different buildings? If I just, uh, if I just grab the shape file for the buildings, which I believe is actually here, and I just visualize that as well. Let's get rid of the first one. You can see these are the actual buildings. And if I just zoom out and I bring some fidelity back onto that map, um, then we can actually start to see some sort of richness in the context that's sort of being played out here. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate this was a long one. Um, if you found this video useful, hit like and subscribe. Um, if not, drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see in the near future. Uh, thank you very much.